this page is that we don't have an economy. Uh, a lot of people would disagree with you. I'm coming now. Let okay. me, I, I will explain myself. Okay, go ahead. I'm, I'm on national television. <laughs> eh? go what ahead. you have is a market. <laughs> Let me tell you the basis of an economy. Okay. Eh? Or what you call economic activity. It must be production driven. Mm. Which is why when you're talking about your import substitution that we, we adopted as a nation, the import substitution model says to you, we are going to be importing what we are not able, the shortfall of our production. But when you have a market, the market is now driven not by production, but by demand and supply. Which is why at one time, I mean for you, for you women, you started first of all, it was in, uh, which country was this now where you were buying lace? It was in Sweden. You started from Switzerland. It went to British gold. We went to uh, uh, China. Now we are, I don't know where we are. Right now, now it was Dubai, Every, everybody's wife, inclusive of mine. Dubai, Dubai, Dubai. It was Switzerland. This is what happens in a market. So when you have that, let me tell you what people now will not try to, they, they call it a market-driven economy. But there is nothing in economies called a market-driven economy when you want to now define it in real terms. Okay, what you either have is a production driven economy or a marketplace. Hmm. We will have to take a short break at this point. The program will continue in a moment. Please stay with us. Welcome back. Today, Finance and Economy is taking a look at the proposed Nigerian 2012 budget. I mean, talking with Chief Emeka Okengo, a management consultant. So welcome back to Thank the program. Thank you. I want to take you back to this issue of fiscal budget. It, it talks about a medium term, at least a medium term uh, project for yes. a country. Yes. What are we doing that we have to restrict ourselves to the annual budget? What will be the advantage of having this kind of medium term Strategy. plans to a short-term strategy? Well, in building an economy, the first thing you need to do in trying to develop an economy is to be able to know how many people you have. Okay. That is very key. So the population is very critical because that is your human capital. Now, the second thing you need to do is to be able to now know what your natural resources endowments are. Because the difference between poverty or poor countries and rich countries is now how you now put value on these two things I've mentioned here your human capital, and your natural resources. Which is why today, take it or leave it, no matter what anybody feels, the Yoruba race is a hundred years ahead of any other race in this country. For the simple fact, there is education. You go to the local governments in the Southwest, it has nothing to do with politics. It has to do with the level of exposure and exposure. That is human capital. And that is why, no matter how much you want to also think about it, there is no sector of this economy that they are not there. It is not because they are doing uh, open manu brotherhood. It is because there is, there is, a, there is a capital, there is, there is a capacity to be able to do the things they do. I'm just trying to give that example. Mm -hmm. Now, what we need to do in this country is to let me take you back to something everybody has forgotten. Why have we not been able to develop our ability for steel? If we say that steel is development and development is steel. And we have it. That should worry you. We have it. Now, in abundance. Le let me tell you, Sharon. To be able to make steel, you need seven other mineral products that are littered all over this country. South Africa has never, please quote me on this, gone into recession. <sighs> South Africa has got in the economy depressed, but ne they never recessed. In our own case, we don't even have an economy to depress or recess. So when the former CBN governor was saying the, the Nigerian economy is not at risk, some other senior citizens said, the man is right. There is no economy. <laughs> so if we had in situ values, I've just given you an instance. Imagine a situation, a country that has 3 billion metric tons of coal, six billion metric tons of iron. We are importing, we are importing steel products from Ukraine. We have a steel plant valued at over 10 billion, 10 billion dollars. 
and this was $10 billion like 18 years United, ago. Yes. Okay? Now, that steel plant has the capacity to generate 50,000 jobs on the plant itself. So when we are talking about budgets, fiscal budgets, when do you pass it, who passes it, you begin to now wonder, what are we talking this, about this, here? This is a mere academic exercise Thank you. every year. Thank you. Because by the end of it, they're saying, okay, uh, capital project, 67%. This 75%. People are losing jobs. Mm. The figures that the CBN is giving as unemployed, un unemployment rate are those who, remember, apply for jobs. What about those who didn't finish school? Mm. What about those who are in the villages? The unskilled ones. You are well. sitting down in this studio. Please say to me, Chief America, you're talking nonsense. They are your friends you left school with that have never worked at all. Some. Never. A lot of them are sorted to things that are un un unimaginable. Mm. And then you are saying, and more people are graduating. <laughs> so if you're looking at this budget and the president says, what I want to do is a trans. Let me tell you the major problem we have in this country. Anytime somebody comes on national television or on newspaper to be able to say things that are not in tandem. The handlers of the president begin to now class you as somebody who is anti the program. That's one. Two, the political culture of Nigeria does not allow for us to be able to now free the political space after elections. Mm. So you must be part of that system or somebody must be able to guide you in, you know, before you can be able to make your cultural contributions. I thought that part of the transitional agenda of Mr. President would have been to make certain that he set up some, some, some feedback mechanism. Don't give people jobs. Some people are not interested in government jobs. Okay? But give them access to be able to give you ideas and let them get, you know, you know uh, responses to these ideas. There are a lot of Nigerians out there who come on television and give you very, very bright ideas on how to move the country forward. The best they say are the man is looking for a political appointment. If you give him chop now, he will close his mouth and start chop. Somebody had actually asked me, Chief America, you keep talking like they say, I would rather not be in government. But if government allowed me access to be able to develop a program that can give us the institute data on our, on our solid minerals, and you give me 1% of that thing, let me tell you what I will do. I will go and buy the whole of Florida because I can afford to do that with the money I can raise. Yet, look at the key ministries we have in this country. Ministry of Solid Minerals, go and look at their budget. How much did they give them? <laughs> Go and look at Ministry of uh, Science and Technology with mm -hmm. 18 or 20 research institutes. How 30, much are they getting? 30.84 billion. Are you listening? <laughs> so if you share that amongst these 18, 18 agencies. Now let's, let's talk about that another issue that was thrown up in, uh, when this budget matter is, uh, is brought up is borrowing to finance budget deficit. Uh, uh, what is the implication of that? The implication is what the woman said to you. You see, what she didn't also say is that she didn't tell us the cost of what you're borrowing. You know, when you go to the bank to borrow money, the bank gives you 10, 10 million. You go back to your, to your house and say to your wife, it's only 10 million I'm owing. You're not in 10 million. <laughs> Do you understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. You're owing 10 million plus the interest, interest plus defaults. Remember that we borrowed 18 million, pay back 22 million, and we're owing 32 million. Or some, some figure like that. Which was why when the Abacha administration came, the man said, I'm a soldier. I don't understand how I will, I, will, I will borrow 80 million from you. I've paid you back 22 million or more, and you are still telling me I'm not going to pay anymore. Did that help us? If it wasn't that the finance minister who had a war bank background came in, by now would have been sinking more and more and more and more into debt. The simple reason is this. You have not been able to look inwards, Shane. We have not been able to do what Ghana is doing today. And they are getting about it very quietly. And that, that, that is what? Mining. Ghana has attracted in the past 10 years over 300 million US dollars in exploration funds for mining. What we are doing is tell people that we... use judiciously, really. Thank you. What, do you have any mine in Nigeria? Do you know how we many people... We have illegal people? mines. Thank you. Do you know how many people a mine... One mine can take. Um, the one that collapsed in South Africa, one shaft had 3,500 men in a shift. Hmm. Yet, we are busy. Bandrim mine. You have the Ministry of Science and Technology that have developed and procured so much, so much technology. How many of them have you deployed? And you're going abroad to not go and borrow money, to not be able to not pay for subsidy, and fund a budget that you know you can't even run. 
With the, uh, a final note now, what should be the way forward? Way forward is very simple, my sister. Let us first of all define, let government define and understand transformational agenda, what it means. The indicators that should follow a transitional agenda. Let them begin to cluster these ministries. The moment you're able to cluster key ministries and make some of them foundational ministries, okay, and then get what you can call a board of ministers. They can be retaining that chairmanship of the board every three months if they must be able to have somebody who's leading. And this cluster of ministries must be able to give one single, single tract, multi dimensional, you know, paper that now shows first and foremost what your institute value is, what your human capital demands are, okay, what your technology is, and what the outcome will be vis a vis contributing to your GDP. Thank you very much, Chief, for coming on Finance and Economy. Okay. Thank you so much. Time now for our tidbit segment. Markets in the Federal Capital Territory continue to bustle after the one-day holiday declared by the Federal Government for the Idil Maloub. Patronage at most markets remain high even after the holiday. Worried about the disparity between lawmakers' emoluments and those of voters, some Nigerians are calling for pay cuts to be in line with the recent realities and to reflect the belt-tightening measures of government. Reports from the News Agency of Nigeria session with the Chartered Institute of Taxation of Nigeria reveal that the Personal Income Tax Act would lower the tax burden of low-income earners. It, however, calls for more awareness creation on the needs and objectives of paying taxes. The Nigeria Stock Exchange, NSE, has set new guidelines in a move to create transparency in obtaining dealer licenses. The new method is to check the previous where licenses were issued at the choice of the Council of the NSE. Financial analysts have expressed caution on the rise in Nigeria's external reserves, arguing that although it is positive, a lack of follow-through on the reform process may undermine the sustainability of the trend. That's it on finance and economy for now. Thank you for watching. Join us again as we look at another topical issue next week. You may send your comments, if any, to shiungolang at gmail.com. I am Shiung Olagunju. Thanks for watching and bye for now.